Hi guys and gals, Froggy here. What I'm going to show you today is, well I've already showed you how to measure caster, now I'm going to show you to, how to actually adjust it on my C5 Corvette. I've got my uh, camber gauge on there and I used a bungee this time so it won't fall off like the last video. And what you have to do first is take your measurements with turning the front wheels left and right 20 degrees. I went over that in the other video. I won't go over it again. I'm going to take my readings and then I'm going to show you how to place the shims to adjust the caster. Okay, so here we go. Here's my wheel. My left front wheel turned to the left. I'm going to call it 1.55 probably. That's bouncing around there. I'm going to call it two. I'm going to call it four point two. And now we've got the right front turned to the left. We're going to go with four point two. So, hold on. So what we have, and this is a formula that I went over in my other video, so you can you want to learn a little bit about the formula. It's not mine. I got it from a David Farmer. Um, I've got, today, I've got 6.943 positive caster on the left front and 7.074 positive caster on the right front and I want to be I want more on this side but it's only a little bit more I don't want to get more on both sides because I'm really happy with about 7.0 the way the car handles with 7.0 um, so let me give you just a little bit more information here this is off of uh, uh, a forum and a caster, a Corvette has positive caster, which means the lower ball joint is positioned forward of the upper ball joint. And picture this here's your wheel, there's the center line of the wheel, there's your upper ball joint, there's your lower ball joint. Now it's exaggerated a little bit just to make, make it clear. So that's positive caster on a Corvette. Now my buddy Dan on the Corvette forum says this, and this is what I'm going to do. To increase caster, you must move the upper ball joint back. To do that, you add shims to the front of the upper control arm or remove shims from the back of the upper control arm. Okay, and it's the opposite we work on the lowest. So, I'm going to add shims to the front of the upper control arm. Now let's make a little picture here. The upper control arm has two dog bones, most people call them. The studs go into the frame and the shims going back. Quite an artist, aren't I? the shims going back of those dog bones and that's your control arm so I'm going to add shims to the front on the left side and of course you add the shims on both sides of the dog bone and that should increase this number and I'm not going to do much. I might, I think I'm going to take a wild guess and do a one millimeter. You know, I might even do a half a millimeter. Ah, uh, I'll do a one millimeter. Half a millimeter is going to be, you know, when, 
when I'm measuring this, you, you notice the wheel is moving because the car is running because you need the car running to turn the wheel. I suppose I could turn it and then shut the car off, but you saw what I did. I just kind of averaged up here. I just averaged where my gauge, my camera gauge was bouncing around. Um, so yeah, I'm okay with that. I'm going to um, add some shims here on the left front and then I'm going to just take the readings all over again to see what happens. So that'll take a little while. I'll show you. So here we are. Now you can actually you can kind of see the angle of the corner upper ball joint lower ball joint you can't really see it but I'm pointing to where it is and you can see that positive caster okay so what did we say we're gonna do uh, let's double check we're gonna add shims we want more caster on the left front so we're gonna add shims only to this side we have to undo all four um, nuts just to you know pull it away so we can insert the shim there and I've got a bunch of shims so let me find a, a couple of one millimeter shims that I'm gonna put in there then I'm gonna bolt it up and we'll see if this changed we'll just do this reading all over again well these are some shims that I got uh, from my uh, uh, my uh, camber kit it's two millimeter shims one millimeter shims I'm out 0.5 millimeter shims and these are some really nice ones I got from McMaster car uh, look at they've got it printed on there one point eight seven nine millimeter which is like a two millimeter I mean uh, <laughs> I believe their number but I'm gonna call it a two millimeter and here's one that's uh, point five oh eight millimeter so point five millimeter half a millimeter uh, so I'll have to use four of those or these that I've got here so I've got plenty okay uh, let me I'm gonna loosen up those four nuts and stick them in there well they're gonna work okay I, I was a little concerned with the McMaster car shims being bigger and not fitting in this front position and in this back position because it has to clear well, that's an inner fender liner piece of plastic but you could either grind this away or you could grind the shim away or you can do what I did which is I, I use the bigger shim stacked on top of the smaller shims so it doesn't really matter um, so I put I put those two in tightened them all up and I'm gonna put the wheel back on I'm gonna roll the car around a little bit drive it a little little bit not drive it around but just drive it 10 or 20 feet back and forward and um, take my measures again and we'll see what we end up with huh okay this is where we are I took the readings after adding 2.5 millimeter half a millimeter shims here on the left front and it did move in the correct direction that I wanted it to move only maybe a little bit too much uh, I'm glad I didn't go with uh, one millimeter <laughs> anyway right now I've got the left front at 7.336 the right front didn't change at all it was just an insignificant change um, within the margin of error or error of measuring and I got 7.07 .07. the old one was 7.074 um, we're really talking about tiny tiny fractions of fractions so before the caster was off 0.13 which it wasn't really off I didn't really care but I just wanted to do this experiment to see 
how caster moves around and how you uh, change it and so on. Now I'm point two six six off <clears throat> the other way, which again, in my opinion, you could call it good. I don't think really any race shop setting up an amateur car would even think twice about doing any more to this, but you know maybe for a race car that's racing for money. Um, now, what I might do, what I think I'm going to do actually, is put 2.5 shims on this side just for the fun of it, to see what happens, because I'm okay with 7.3, 7.4, 7.2, whatever. I'm okay with all of those caster settings. Um, but I just, you know, right now I'm just having fun in my garage. I'm just doing this for you guys and gals and uh, seeing how it works. Uh, so I'm going to add, I don't have anything smaller than a 0.5 millimeter, which is a pretty small shim. They make them smaller, and uh, I could buy some maybe if I, if I get interested enough to play with it some more. But I'm just going to put some uh, on the right-hand side on the the front edge I'm gonna put uh, 2.5 millimeter shims and then uh, re uh, recheck it one more one more time okay so I'll get back to you when I've got that done I'm not gonna video how to do that or um, any of that because you, you know you've already seen it all okay I'll just get back to you with the with the finished uh, measurements okay Let's wrap it up. Here's what I got. I added shims to the right side, same as I added shims to the left side, 0.5 millimeter. The first time I measured after I added them to the right side, I got 7.6 on the left and 7.1 on the right. I'm rounding those numbers in my head. So that's 0.5 off. I wasn't too happy with that. I didn't like that. Although the direction that, uh, well, let me just say this. I think that's a measuring error. So what I did was I measured it over again. I didn't change anything. And I got some new numbers. 7.2 on the left and 7.1 on the right which is very close 0.131 difference and I'm gonna throw out that that one there because I think it was a measuring error um, how you attach things to the car is important if you've got your tool straight it's important my floor is level, but my, my turn plates are pieces of cardboard with pieces of plastic underneath. So that cardboard is compressing every time I turn the wheel. So I don't know what to tell you. That's, that's the best I can do until I get some or decide to buy some turn plates. Um, I roll the car each time in between, so it's not a question of the suspension settling. I did settle the suspension. Conclusions, uh, and I said this in the previous caster video, if you're with, within two tenths side to side, you're good enough. Don't worry about it. I ended up the same amount off, 0 0.131, actually amazing, 0 0.131, only when I started, the right side had more caster, and when I ended the left side had more caster so go figure uh, but I do hope you learned something from this about uh, playing around with caster and I, I am glad that I'm up to a little bit higher caster number although before I was alright um, well, about the 7.0 range um, now I, I gotta move on I've gotta set my uh, camber now and then tomorrow I'll do toe again because you always have to fix toe after you do camber. Here's another interesting thing. Um, 
the overall negative camber really didn't change much. I just I, I just took a reading on it. Here it was 2.9. At the end it was 3.0. You know, it's within the, the margin of error of the measuring tools and the guy doing the measuring. Um, but I thought that cast, changing caster would change camber a little bit, but I'm doing such a small amount that I don't think it really changed it. If I was doing you know, going from six to eight or something like that, then I think I might have seen some camber changes, but uh, no. So anyway, that's what Froggy's got for you today. Uh, I'm not going to uh, bother with the camber video because I've already done that, and I, I'm just going to get going fast on this so I can get the car ready for the weekend. Okay, uh, so I hope you guys liked it, and gals, and uh, give me a thumbs up or a like, or give me uh, uh, click on... Uh, Subscribe if you want more from Froggy. See you later. Bye-bye. There's a quick shot of the camber I ended up setting. I added about one millimeter of shim. Because I had to take a two out and put a one in. So a net gain of one. 2.8. Perfect. It was 2.9 to 3.0 before. Okay. See you guys and gals.